Wow, look at the size of this place. We're here at AW Precision in Rugby. Yes. Now, Andy, first of all, what do you guys do here and how many machines have you got? Right, so we've got around 200 machine tools. Um, we're AW Precision and we've been manufacturing punching and dies since 1970. That's amazing. 1970, they've been going at least 50, 52 years. Yep. I'm just going to say a little bit of housekeeping. I'm very sorry for the, uh, the lack of the Swarf and Chips muffs. Les um, from Intico, I'm very sorry because uh, Colin left them in Germany, unfortunately on a train, so they're on German eBay right now. So if you see them, please let us know. Let Colin know, <laughs> give him a shipment text. But we're obviously sponsored by Intico, which is all about special steels and alloys. They hold 17 million pounds worth of stock in Cheltenham in the UK. So if you need any special steels, get in touch with Intico. Right, that's, that's housekeeping done. Let's keep walking. Yep. Where are we going to go first? So we've got material right, stock so here. So our shop floor is all set up in process. So we've gone from raw material stock which is predominantly tool steel. So high speed, M2, Venadis, we've got Calmax, all sorts. We then go into the turning section. And it's all round stock here. Why all is it all round? round? stock, because all our products are predominantly round. Yeah, it makes it easy. They it don't have does. to deal with any, any We do have square stock, but that'll be on our million section. So we've got conventional CNC, manual turner, we also have our sliding head lathes from the start. And you've got so many different kinds of machines We here. do, we you've do. You've got lathes, grinders, service grinders, manual grinders, you've got centerless. I we mean, have you know about everything. Mean. We have everything. We are probably one of the largest subcontractors of such diversity in the UK. Um, we've got everything from turning, as you say, grinding, milling, five axis, three axis, and conventional. You see you've got all of these collet systems for holding yep. the work holding and for holding the tooling. I guess it's a lot easier that you, only, you know you're only going to deal with bar stock. Absolutely. That probably makes, brings down the, the work holding it, cost it does, quite a bit. It does. The other, I guess you see some band saws around the place. <laughs> we do, yeah. The other competitive advantage we have is we do our own in house heat treatment. So. We also use external as well, depending on quantity, but we do our own in-house heat treatment. So product is manufactured on our turning section and then overnight into heat treat and back out again. We have very short lead times. We're and talking five to seven days. So these are our fit, vacuum furnaces. You can fit a lot of material in here at once. We I guess can. The, the bar stock or the round parts will fit in, in yep. shelving and baskets and whatnot. Two Fanat Robo drills sat next yes. to the turning centre. What are these? Are these doing separate operations? These are doing separate operations. So some of our products require a spring-loaded pin. This is used to produce part of that spring-loaded pin. Right, okay, so these are really special, specialised applications they just are. doing spring-loaded pins Absolutely. day in, day out. Purely really, for that process. And those robot, they look like some of the first robot drills that Fanuc were making. They are they've indeed. They've been there probably for quite a while, haven't they? they? Have. And they're still going strong? I would say they've probably been there for 25 years. Brilliant. And I've got to say, Colin's the camera, doing the camera work today, so if it doesn't quite look, look great, you can't quite see the, the, <laughs> the machine beds, then I think you might have to blame Colin. And he's all the way down there. Come on, look, we've already gone down in. But you can see how big this, this, um, this factory is. It is. I'm amazed it's not split into different units. Normally, you don't see one massive factory with all the machines on the same floor. Purpose built for ourselves. I was going to say, have you, have you had to have the, the foundations and the foundations the, the floor? are in completely laser lined floor? Um, where our big bridge eight is, Let's keep going to the yeah, sliders. Where our big bridge eight is, um, that's a completely reinforced floor um, for the weight of the machines. So we'll go, go and look yeah, at that a yeah. little bit later. And that's absolute, I guess that's an absolute beast of a machine. It is. But again, normally people are either fixed head or sliding head. You, you guys have got both of you. You've got, you we got some have stars. Both. Yeah. Um, we produce a lot of parts for our own stock to enable quick turnaround. So these machines are used for our stock production. The other machines, the other lathes are there for the ones, twos, threes. We, as I say, we produce very small batch volume. Because these sliders are all about volume production, aren't they? They are. So these are produced for our stock and these are producing three, four, five, six hundred parts. It's nice, I guess, that you can rely on orders every month that you know you're going to yeah. be able to make them on a bit of downtime when maybe Absolutely. you've not got other things Absolutely. to get out the door. Yep. What kind of lead times do you try and pride yourselves on? Obviously. We try and, for a standard product that doesn't require external, so it doesn't require coating and things like that, we can do in five to seven days. If it's a standard punch or die, Let's keep going. we can obviously do it in about 24, 48 hours. 24 hours? Yes. Oh my, I guess that's probably the, 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 the tighter end of turning things round. Um, it is, but because we've got that raw stock available to us, we're able to do it. We can, we can move quicker than our competitors. Which I guess is what helps you give you that competitive advantage, and also the fact that you've got all you can do all of the operations yep. in the house. Yes. And do you outsource anything? Nope. And absolutely nothing. Not well, obviously not even heat treatment. From a from a standard product point of view, for what we produce for our customers, we don't outsource anything. The only thing we will outsource is coating for the product. So if the customer requires a specific pro coating because they're piercing aluminium or high strength steels, ultra high strength steels, that will go out because we can't do that. Okay, so if I have a piece of material, I've gone from the material shelf, yep. I've gone to fixed head, maybe a slider, then the fanic, yep. then where do I go next? So you come out of heat treatment, now we're going to center okay, the bodies. Okay, so I'm, I'm a bit harder now. You're a bit harder now. Okay. You, you're up to about 60, 62 Rockwell. <laughs> um, we'll then put your head in a, a very, very large machine, which will bring the head down to 40, 45. Oh, is it, are we talking about the... The little heading machine in the corner. Oh, okay, so that's and a then, specialist machine. Yeah. 
and then we go to centerless. So ah, this okay, is so used for the external body of the punch to bring it within a H6 tolerance. So the what I find so fascinating about the centerless machines is there is no work holding, there's no gripping really. They're kind of held by the, the action of the two grinding wheels against each other. So you've got the work rest blade there, the part will rest on the work rest blade, which Colin's now looking at. <laughs> um, very manual process. Very manual process. You have to put it in, and you set. You all have the, to put it in. Your fingers have to go near that machine. Which is yeah, which I guess is, is, is not the nicest for nowadays. Obviously, people are worried about thinking about how absolutely, a lot more. absolutely. So there's a lot of training involved before you're allowed on these machines. Okay, I'm surprised we've been allowed that right here. To be honest, I've got no not training right whatsoever. Um, we also have automatic centerlesses that will pick the part up itself, load it into the machine, and produce the part. Itself. I guess those are quite complex pieces of machinery they versus. Are they Again, are. humans, are just, we're fantastic at yeah. doing those kinds of jobs, aren't we? Are. We, we okay, are. So we've just been sent to this ground. And what kind of accuracies, concentricities do you try and achieve with these machines? So we're trying to get as concentric as possible because what happens next is we've then got to put a point on the front. So we take the body down to a different diameter at the front for, say, 19, 25 millimetres. Well, if the body's then out, the point's then out, if you're going to then run that in a press at 200 strokes a minute, you're going to create an awful big so bang. So the, the shank, which you might think was a bit of an afterthought, is actually, that's one of the most important parts. It's not the business yes, end, really. it's the shank that's the real important Correct. piece. And this is one of the things with our product. You look at the product, you think, this is really, really simple product. Actually, there's a lot of scientific knowledge goes into it. There's a lot of experience from our guys and ladies that go into it as well. Yep, definitely. So it's material science, it's yes. engineering knowledge. Okay, so I've just been ground down my, sh my uh, so the shank ground, is really your shank, concentric. The shank's ready to go. <laughs> Where do I go next? <laughs> so now we've got to decide what we're going to do. So is the punch going to have a body flat on? So are we going to go to the surface grinding section? Or are we going to put a point on the front? Are we so going to put a different type of shape? Where things will flow into this different, is it. different so areas. Our shop floor is set up in the two halves. So in this side of things... Let's go and have a look. Yeah. So we've got our surface grinding section over this side. So this is where we'll be putting surface flats on, body flats, head flats. Uh, we might be putting dowel slots into so the product. So those are for all location inside the, uh, the bolster, did you say? That's it, absolutely. So location either within the punch plate or the die plate. Um, they have to be very accurate because the punch and die have to line up with themselves. If they don't line up, again, big bang, And I've big seen problem. these stamping machines run. I've seen probably similar yeah, yeah. stamping machines run. And they are going at an absolute rate of knots. There's they a big are. cam thing rotating around. Yep. turning into linear motion, it, it's, it. it's really fascinating to watch how many parts they put out in a minute is, is incredible. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And again, when you look at the materials that they're actually stamping, there's a lot of science and technology that goes into these. A lot of people look at their car and just take it for granted that that hole in metal is just there. Well, yeah. when you see what goes into that process... They just drilled it, but it's not. Exactly. When you're trying to hit the volumes that automotive tries to hit, yes. you can't just have a hand no, in pillar drill. No, you, you need can't. to be stamping them out yep. with a form saw. Absolutely. Okay, so, so then we'll go on to the grinding section. Yep. Right, so we've got to put a few flats on. I'm now located inside that. I can locate yep. inside that bolster. So now we're going to put a point on the front of you. Okay. We can either do that by hard turning. Yep. So we've got two hard-inch machines for hard Fantastic. turning. Fantastic. Nice. So, so the hardening machines, nice rigid machines. It's Absolutely. all about precision with hard turning, yes. but also being able to dig under the material yep. and, and get that hard, that hard material off. Yes. And again, with this, it's all down to the surface finish. When you're piercing aluminium, when you're piercing other products, it will create type of a, a like an abrasiveness. Well, the better the surface finish, the less abrasiveness, the more holes per punch people get. The less wear you get with Absolutely. it. Right? Absolutely. it's not just the harness, it's the actual form of the punch. It is. Well. I didn't know that. It okay, is. Fair enough. So yep. you're trying to get that, that real sharp point. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Okay, fair enough. Right, um, so it doesn't drag in the material. And exactly. then we'll stick a point on the... Would you then finish grind after you've hard turned? No, no. Hard turning will be the finished process. That's the or okay. we do finish grinding instead. So we can do the two options. It okay. depends on to what the customer needs. Are they quicker turnarounds on hard turning? They are for certain products, but again, the steels we use on it. So Vanadis materials, ASB materials, we'll do on here. Whereas on this type of machine, we're producing, again, very high accuracy. You know, they're not the CNC machines. No, and then they're not even brand new machines either. No, but they're not. They're very well made, obviously. Yes. They've lasted you all this, this yes. so far. Okay, so five axis milling, which I've, I've not actually seen. We've seen the Fanex Robodil is the closest, but I'm more of a miller. So right, the closest okay. we've seen to what I know my best is definitely the Fanex <laughs> over there. So. Let's move on to something I know a little bit more about. So our latest investment uh, was the Kitamiura oh, okay. uh, five-axis machine. Fantastic. So we're talking... So um, we've got a fair few millers as well. You have, yeah, look at these. You've got a Rumi, you've got... What, what machine this is this? a Micron. 
Micron machine. So, right? which is now, I think it's Adi Charmi. We've got the Romy, we've got XYZ, and we've got the Kitamura. So, you, you, do you try and find, do you explore the market in machine yes. tools and try and find Absolutely. which work best for your application? Exactly, exactly. And I guess your engineers will, it's good for them because they can learn different controls, yep. different ways of running machines, different configurations. So, yes. how do you keep those, those engineers upskilled? Upskilling is done predominantly by themselves and their own determination to move. It's all about intuition. It, no, is. In, it is. The thing is, because the products come through and everyone's different, every day's a school day. Yeah. You've got to learn as you keep moving forward. And these lads and ladies are absolutely superb in what they do. Yeah. At the end of the day, we would not be as successful and we wouldn't be here since the 1970s without these people. Some of these people here have been here 38, 39 years. Really? Oh, absolutely. And I, guess they're, they're, and I guess they're still interested in learning about the brand new machines, yeah. as well as the, the old Jones and Shipman's that you're still stripping exactly. parts out of to, to refurbish your... Again, sure. you know, it's all down to touch. You've got to listen to the machine, you've got to feel the machine. It sounds a bit cliche, but it's not. You can hear that machine when the grinding wheel's not working. You can feel the product, you know when something's wrong, and they can work with that. You can't get that skill from a CNC machine. It's not going to do it for you. You have to have that personal element Absolutely. within the product. Someone thinks you can drop one of these things in, and because it's got a computer on it, you program on the computer, it'll do what yeah. you want. But it's not. It's still subject to the laws of physics. You've still got to have a little bit of that Absolutely. engineer's magic. Absolutely. Brilliant. Okay, so Kitamura 5-axis yes. machine. Yep. And what are, you, what are you generally using it for? Is it for the more complex form? This is for the more complex form. So this is more of our subcontract nature of the business rather than our standard punch and die. So this is things so we're using for material for forming. Um, we've even made a, an aircraft uh, pilot's head on it. Really? Yeah. Okay, just to, just to show <laughs> just off to your, show what your we can do. Knowledge. Yeah, just to show. So if someone's looking at this and thinking, yep. "My God, you've got loads of machines. You do big jobs. You turn around 24 hours," but I've only got a couple of punches I need to make. What's your minimum order value? One. One. So if you need a punch making, you can have you one. Can to, you you one. can have one, or you can have 101. We specialise in the very small batch volume, so ones, twos, threes. And there isn't many people that do it. High precision, but also very competitively cost. Our product portfolio or envelope, it basically, if it fits in your hand, we can probably make it for you. To a fantastic degree of precision and Absolutely. accuracy because of the vast array of uh, vast assets array. you've got here and the vast array of engineering knowledge. Yes. Yeah, and that's what it, it, it's the knowledge. It's the skill and the expertise of these people in front of the machines that can produce these products for the customer. Yes, you can buy it cheaper elsewhere. Yes, you can buy it from the Far East. Yes, you can buy it from other places, but you're not going to get the you're just not going to get the same product. Yeah, you might get it cheaper. Tolerances might be a little bit out, but this is a high precision, well-made product in the UK. Brilliant. So, if you need any punches, get in touch with AW Precision. Fantastic service. 24 to 48 hour turnaround if uh, if you if, need it. Yeah, absolutely. If it's a standard product, we can do it. If it needs something else, coating, something like that, it might be a little bit longer. But yeah, we all all day, every day we're here. Brilliant. Come to AW Precision, check them out. They're in rugby in the UK.